So before we start the workshop, I'm going to do a very quick lecture on another standard input-output function. We talked about printf and we talked about put char. We said printf prints a C string, which is essentially a series of characters back to back in a, in a string. And we learned about put char that puts a single character. We learned about, we learned about, uh, let me just bring it up and, and show it while we are doing it. So, because I saw some empty looks to me, just mm -hmm. as if I'm saying something, like something that is absolutely nonsense. So let me just bring it up and two, four, four, one, four, four, one, four, four. And here we are. So before you do anything in your repository, the first thing you do is pull. People forget doing that will cause conflict. So the very first thing you do is a pull. Make sure everything is updated. OK? So now I have a pull. Now I can actually start working on it. Yes, is that a question? OK. Because <laughs> you like, oh. <laughs> I don't know if you're just mocking me or you have a question. OK, so, so yeah. So I'm going to go to notes, and this is uh, January 7th. We only had one? That's interesting. OK. Select folder. That's the folder I want the project to be in. Maybe once I'm going to do this with Xcode. But hey. OK. 02, uh, January 20th. Create. And we're going to have our project created. And in here, I'm going to open the files from the last session and then uh, bring it up to show you that, um, be careful, you cannot add files that are not within the dir current directory of your uh, um, project in Visual Studio. When you are Visual Studio, because usually when you, when you just click to open, it opens the last place it actually opened before, which you do not want that. So what you need to do is to make sure that the directory is actually uh, where you are in at right now. So we're going to go in here, notes and this one. So I'm just going to open these and talk about it, the things that we talked about. All right, so we talked about different types, characters short, int, long, and long, long. Sorry, it's a, it's a, teacher's, it's a teacher's reflection. No, no, it's not your fault. See. OK, I have to explain this. And I know people who are watching this at home can't see what I'm talking about. Um, it's a reflex with teachers. Like, if you do this, I just see a shadow that it went up. And I immediately look to see if it's a question. So comfortably do this. Don't worry. I'll look at you. But when I see it's not a question, I'm, I'm going to just ignore it. But because of me, don't be like this, OK? That, that's, that, that, it's just the teacher's reflex. As soon as I see hands up, then I'll do that. We said that we have types in C language, and the types that we have is the type of variables, containers, in which we hold stuff uh, to do calculations and things with it. Numbers. Numbers can be either two major categories. They're either whole numbers, scalars. They're uh, solid, non-partial numbers, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or they are floating point numbers that they have a decimal part at after the decimal point. So 1.5, 6.2, or 2.0. 2.0 is a floating point number, although it doesn't have any partials, because when I said 0, 0.0, it could have a partial. If you try to put a floating point number inside a, an integer, automatically chops off the partial part and only keeps the whole part. That's what we learned. We learned that we, the C is language of functions, and the functions we create, uh, they have a type that they return. They have uh, uh, a type that they receive. They are essentially like a machine. You feed them with stuff. It's like a meat grinder. You put meat from one side, grinded meat comes out from the other side. So the place that you put the meat inside, uh, that's the parentheses over there. So that's where you put the stuff in, inside the function. and the function can return values to you. Now, if your function's job is not to communicate with other functions, if your 
function's job is not to communicate with other functions, then there is nothing coming in and nothing going out. So when I say a function receives and returns something, it means it receives and returns something from another function, not outside world. Coming from outside world is through standard input-output functions. That's a completely different story. It has nothing to do with what a function receives and what a function returns. So when you look at the program, and I ask you to write a program, and I say, there is, there is a function that receives two integers and returns a floating point number. Okay, this means in parentheses of the function, you're going to have two integers, and what it returns is not void, it's floating point. How? We're going to see it later. But if I tell you there is a function that receives an integer from the user and prints this and that to the user, that has nothing to do with return, receiving and returning. It is scanning and printing stuff. It has nothing to do with what function returns to other functions. So let's understand these two realms, these two realities in computers. When you are dealing with computers, there are two realms. One inside the communication, inside the computer, and the communication that happens between the procedures inside the computer. Another one, outside world, where users feed stuff into your program. That has nothing to do with receiving and returning of a function. They are other things that we just saw. So if my function prints something, for example, the line function prints something, it's printing it on screen. It has nothing to do with what it returns. Okay? And that's what we, that's what we did. So we created, uh, we learned how to create functions that don't receive and don't return anything. And these functions have bodies that is between a curly bracket in front of them. And that's the syntax of the language of C. You will see that any command, function, or anything that can have a body is represented that way. We're going to come to it soon. So if I have a statement that is supposed to own a body, like a function, a piece that it belongs to it, it's always between an open curly bracket and closed curly bracket. And we're going to keep to that standard even if it has exceptions. So there are sometimes exceptions that say, you could ignore that. We don't do that. We always go by standard. We'll, we'll come to that soon. So we know that functions can call each other, but the one function that you can't call is main function. Main function is called by the operating system to start the chain reaction of execution in your program. First, main, main is called by the operating system. Then you call other functions to, to do your task. In this one, what we did, we create a few variables. We did the greetings at the beginning. What the greeting does, I don't need to care because I wrote it three weeks ago and I'm happy about it. It works. I don't need to waste my brain cells for it. That's why we write functions. A task that is complicated, we divide it into five pieces and we just concentrate it on one fifth of it. We finish it. We dump it. We forget it. We put it aside. We just know that it can happen. That's the beauty of modular programming. That's the beauty of functional programming. To separate the big task into small one and then call them. So in here, I'm going to say greetings and I'll do my calculation. Then I'm going to do a printf showing the calculations I've done. And I say goodbye and I get out. And I'm not even using the line. Oh, I'm using the line function in greetings. And I'm not even using the line function in main. But greetings is using the line function to underline the hello message. And goodbye is drawing a line and then saying goodbye. So functions can be called within each other. And how do we track it? In Visual Studio, we are doing it with F10 that actually steps over. In Xcode, is F6, if I believe correct. F6, people, S Xcode, oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay, trader. Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, for, for uh, let me just pause for a second. So on my Mac, let me see if I actually have the... Uh, uh, the thing created. Oh, I don't want that. Um, <laughs> uh, I see. I put it in documents. People, put the stuff in documents, not on desktop. Okay, and that's workshop, WS1 lab, and yeah, there you go. So, so that's my lab one that see that I have done, and, and you're gonna do the same thing. Uh, and with uh, with Visual Studio Code, what you do? Oh. I close it by mistake. Visual Studio Code, what you do is
uh, sorry, with uh, this is actually command line I did it. So with uh, Xcode, create a new project. Command line is correct. And name is test. And yada, yada, yada. Language is C. I'll go next. Then in here, uh, I'll go back. Or I'll go to documents. I put it in IPC 144 works and that's it so the main that I have over here it gets created just by this one and now I want to go to debugging the problem is that it says it's presenting how can I make it go away because you don't see it but I have something over here that I cannot see anyways so if, if well, the first thing you do to, to trace, you start it, but you have to first toggle uh, a breakpoint. You toggle a breakpoint, then you start it, and it goes, oh, not there, sorry. Here. Ended with zero. So, yes, yes. So you, you highlight, you go for debug, if I recall correctly yesterday. Breakpoints, uh, uh, create a breakpoint breakpoint so in here probably it was a weird key you have to I think put options and something else so I'll put it in here then I'll go debug breakpoints create breakpoints is command and backslash okay so if I want to have a breakpoint here let me take this off if I want to have a breakpoint over here command uh, backslash yeah so that activates it then you run it and it should stop at that point as you see it stopped over there it says stop and then we debug over here step over is f6 step into is f11 and step out is f8 okay so you cannot like visual studio i do an f10 and it runs it you have to first put a breakpoint right at the beginning of the function wherever you want you start it and then it stops over there and then you walk through it step by step okay so Let's go get away of that one and come back here. Yeah. So now uh, that I'm here, I'm just I'm going to press the F10 and actually go step by step through this, which is not going to work because this is this program is not in my solution. I have to actually save this program. It was in the previous section, right? You see that? I'm going to go back, bring it to the current one, so it's saved here. I'll close the other ones that I do not need. Now I'm going to say add existing item, add the code that I have from the 20th, January 20th, within its own directory, and now I can run it. I press F10, and it starts. So then I'll bring this one at right hand side, and this one at left to see how the execution goes. So F10 jumps over, jumps over. If I want to go into greetings, I press F11. As you see now, the execution goes inside greetings. Again, F10, printf, it prints hello, and then it draws a line. If I want to see how line is drawn, I press F11 to go inside. If I want it to completely get executed without walking through it, I press F F10, see? I press F10, and it runs it as one command. Then put character a new line, goes over there, comes out, does all the stuff that it's supposed to do. Now it says goodbye. I press F11. I go inside goodbye. Now I want to see how the line works. I press F11. It goes inside line, prints that one comes back to goodbye and program ends. So you can walk through your application, your program and see how it works using Visual Studio the exact same way with uh, X, Xcode, okay? Yeah, so, but, but, but the thing is that for, for visual, for, uh, tell me, uh, Xcode, what you, what, what you need to do, let me uh, expand this. So stop it. So with Xcode is like this. You have to first put a breakpoint at the beginning of the execution. So I'm going to put it here. This is an executable. But in here, you see you bring it back and you put it. It's the same thing, I think, with Xcode. With Xcode, I believe it's the same scenario. Because I did this, as you see over here, it, it toggles it back and forth. So that is a breakpoint. 
So I can actually bring it with mouse and click it over here. It's the same way as the other one. So first you create a breakpoint. After you cre create a breakpoint, and in this case it's like this, I just press play. So it runs and stops right at the... Oh, I was halfway through execution. So it runs. Local Windows... Sorry, that was uh, without uh, debugging. This one. So I press play and it runs and it stops exactly and then I can continue. So that's how you have to do it with Mac. Okay? Which is very fine. Doesn't make any difference. So now we know what functions are and how they work and everything's good about that. Which brings us back to another thing. I could print something on the screen, but how can I read something from the keyboard? Okay? Reading something from the keyboard hap is done using a, uh, uh, using a function like from the family of printf. It is in standard input output. So, for example, in here, I am setting fnum to 25 and fnum to this, and I'm setting the values, right? I don't want that. I want to find the sum of two values. So, if I want to do that, so in here, I'm going to say a function review. That's what we did right now. I'm going to go back here and clean it up. So let's say I want to find the sum of two values and print them up. I'm not going to do it in functions. It's a very simple thing about scanf. So I'm going to say integer num1 and integer num2. Now I'm going to say printf enter two numbers. Okay? Then in here I can say scanf. It means scan formatted. And in here I'm going to say percent %d, exactly as I mentioned. So for, so for uh, reading integers, so I'm going to call it format specifiers. percent whatever, so the percent that you put. If it's percent D, it's integer. If it's percent, correct me if I'm wrong, LD, I think it's long integer, right? Do we have something like that or we don't? Ah, forget about it. So, so probably it's going to be D. So I'm going to put these things. I, I don't remember it. I have to take a look. Yes. Pardon me? No, no, no. Here? I'll tell you why not. We'll put the new line and we'll find out what happens. Okay? Percent LF is for uh, floats and F is for floats. And percent LF is for doubles. Now, these are all in the notes. Please go find it out. And percent C is for characters, single characters. One character, if you want to enter. You can got, get a name. We don't have such a mechanism in C. For that, we have to learn another function and learn how it works. There is no variable that can hold fardad in it. Fardad is six, vari six variables, six characters. We only, have, we only have integers and floats. Remember that. And the smallest integer is a character that holds the ASCII code that we are talking about, like the things that we mentioned. So there is no mechanism to hold, like, for example, say, please enter your name, and you put the name. There is a way for it. Don't worry about it. But, but we're going to come to it soon. We have to learn a few things first. Anyways, so now, it, knowing these things, I, I want to get two integers, so I'm going to say percent %d, and in here I'm going to say address of num1. Remember, when you put an ampersand beside a variable, call it address of. If I hear somebody call that ampersand or and sign, I'll kill you. Okay? You don't do that. This is address of, and you never say anything other than that. Okay? You don't know what it is. I don't care. I don't know what it is. We don't care. We just know it's called address of. Okay? In my experience as a teacher for many, many years, if you say something before you know it, when you learn it, it fits. Okay? So you don't know what the devil is an address. 
Uh, we don't want to, but just say address of. You say scanf needs address of a variable. What is that address of? It's that ampersand that you would. Then far that's going to kill you. But anyway, but yeah, so address of. Remember that. So address of num1, because scanf needs to know where the variable is to put the value in it. That's why. But anyways. And in here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, um, uh, pre enter two numbers, and I'm going to have another scanf, percent d, num2. Now in here, I'm going to say integer sum, and I'm going to say sum is equal to num1 plus num2. And we know that that's assignment, which means first it does the right-hand side, adds these two up, and then it prints the sum out. So now in here, I can say printf, uh, the sum is sum, and I'm going to put over here a percent %d, and I'm going to go to new line. Your name, my friend? Oh, Greg. Greg? OK, Greg, let's put a new line over here and see what happens. OK? So I'm going to write it step by step again. So scanf is supposed to read something from screen, right? So I'm going to do it. Oh, I got errors. Let's see what is the error. Uh, oh, something very important. Remember I told you C is a very dangerous language. <laughs> it's a very powerful language. It gives you, remember that when we talk about the type of the languages, I said it's a language that you can do things very close to the hardware, and at the same time, you can do things that are close to human beings, so it's, it works in all aspects of the thing. Because of that fact, C is a dangerous language too. It's like a gun without a safety. You can shoot it at the moment's notice, but you might shoot yourself in the foot too. So the functions you are working with right now, you'll find out that these are functions that if you don't use them carefully, it's going to crash your program. That's shooting yourself in the foot. Okay, so because of that, we have to tell it to the new compilers that, hey, I know there are safer functions like this, but because I'm learning, I need to use this. So please don't give me security warnings for the CRT means your console. Don't give me security stuff, warnings for the thing. How do we do that? Because I'm lazy, I'm just going to copy that. And at the top, you tell to the compiler as you included standard input output, you just write over here, define, and you paste that thing. That's it. It means no warning on uh, STDIO functions, for example. Okay? And that prevents it. So we put that being safe side copy that somewhere and stick it at the top of every single program that you're writing, okay? Just for your code to get compiled. We'll learn later on what these things are. But again, okay? So I'm going to press F10 and run it one more time. So I'm going to put this one at right, and this one's going to write left. So now it comes in here. As you see, there's a wiggly thingy over here that I'll, oh, 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 did this, is it okay? I think it's okay. Is it good? Why is it giving me that? Uh, anyways, we'll see. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. But that's too rich for our blood at the moment. All right, so we say enter two numbers. Look at the cursor, Greg, over here. Don't you want to receive the numbers in front of the thing? You see? So you don't always go to new line. Sometimes you want to show a point and then they want to enter. Okay? So I'm going to stop it and correct it. Remember I told you when the program compiles and everything's good, it's the beginning of your work? It means you now you have to actually fix the logic. So now we stop it and we put over here, we remove that thing, and I'm just going to put a space so it has a space between the entry so it looks good. So we'll do it one more time. Now I'm going to come over here. And now it's at a nice place over here. Now it says scanf, so it's actually doing it, right? Now in here, I need to enter two numbers. Let's put 10 and 20. OK? I want you to listen to me carefully. I don't know if it's too early to tell you this, but uh, 
It's a good idea to know it. Have you seen those vending machines that they have the, 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 the Coke bottles straight like that and you pick one, it keeps coming down and, and it ends at the end and it's finished? Okay, keyboard is like that. Your keyboard is a vending machine of characters. When you are typing on it, it's stacking the pops. Okay, and it gets stacked on in your keyboard. When you read it, it pops it from the bottom until it's finished. You understand what I'm saying? So, when you type, you can start typing without computer reading it. It's going to stack it and wait for computer to start reading it. And then it's going to feed it to the computer until it's finished. Got it? So, now as you see, I am on first scanf and I put two numbers over there, right? As soon as I hit enter over here, see what happens. The first scanf is done, correct? And the value inside num1, if I put my mouse over there, I don't know if you can see that. It's 10. The first one is red. Or do we agree? Are we okay with this? Now, if I continue the execution, I am expecting for it to wait for me to enter the next number, correct? But it doesn't need to because 20, 20 is stacked in the keyboard. So the next thing it's going to pick up is the 20 that is in the keyboard waiting to be read. And that's the second thing. So it reads that one. So it doesn't stop at it. And now you look at it over here. It will be 20. Now 20. I have 20 over here. And I have t uh, 10 or 20 over here. If you highlight them, you can actually look at the value that is the sum, which is 30. And that 30 will be poured into sum. Sum is now garbage. After the execution, is 30. And it's going to say the sum is 30. Okay? That's one way of doing it. But if I was writing this program, I wouldn't have written it like this. I would make it, I would make it more interactive. Which means, so in here I'm going to say, uh, be uh, sum version 1 v1.cpp c okay so the next thing i'm going to write is like this take a look so in here i'm saying enter two numbers and i'm putting a column right but i'm going to do greg's type so i'm going to put over here new line i'm going to go to new line then after the new line i'm going to show it greater than sign and a uh, space and I'm going to come after the next scanf, and in here I'm going to put 1. And then in here I'm going to say printf 2. So what happened? What's the difference between? The difference is that now I'm talking with the user. I am not telling it to enter two numbers and get the two numbers out at once. I'm going to get it one by one. So what happens over here, it actually executes the same way, absolutely no problem. It's going to tell, it's as you see, it's going to say, enter two numbers, and it puts one and a cursor in front of it. And now first scan if happens. I see one, I put the first number. So I put 10, I hit enter. Now the second printf happens. The second printf happens, and it shows two. So the user knows now it's time for the second one, puts 20. Not there. Sorry. First execute scanf. Scanf reads. Keyboard waits. 20. Hit enter. The exact same calculation happens. And program ends. So the first one was okay. But the second one is more user friendly. Okay. And we're going to keep going. So we have two types of user interface that we are going to learn to create. Number one for them to, is to be user friendly. Number two foolproof what is foolproof hopefully soon you're going to learn you write a program that if user closes his eye hits the keyboard like that garbage won't go in there if right now instead of 20, 10 over there i type ten the program is going to crash because i told scanf i'm giving you an integer then i start entering characters over there scanf doesn't know how to handle it it's just poof crashes and you're going to get some garbage. Take a look.
Ten. See that? So, we right now are writing programs at the beginning, assuming that user is intelligent, sane human being. It is absolutely impossible in computer programming. You have to write the program for someone who's dumb as a doorknob sitting in front of your computer. The programs are written that way. And most of the time, that dumb as a doorknob user is ourselves testing the program. And we make a mistake ourselves. You know that it says, like they say, as soon as you're a student, you be, no matter how old you are, no matter how many degrees you have, you become a student, you become naughty. That's what they say. I don't know. Or you procrastinate or things like that. It's like that. When you are writing the program, you're an intelligent programmer. As soon as you sit over there, you become a user, we do stupid stuff. And we have to make sure that doesn't happen in future, not now. Okay, so that's scanf and how it works. Scanf receives address of variables and receives it. And that's that. Now we can start our workshop. Any questions? Suggestions? First this one. Are we good? Okay, now let me make my computer ready for workshop. Stop the recording. Or maybe pause the recording.